Have you ever wondered how copper goes from rocks to fine wire? It's a fascinating journey that starts deep within the earth. You see, a staggering 90% of all copper is extracted from open pit mines. But here's the catch. Less than 1% of what's mined is actually copper. The rest is just ore. So, how does it go from being a part of rock to a shiny useful wire? Let's find out. The journey of copper from rocks to wire starts with processing the ore. Picture this, a vast open pit mine where over 90% of the world's copper ore is extracted. But here's a twist, there's less than 1% of copper in that ore. So we have to roll up our sleeves and get to work. The first step is to crush the ore into a fine sand. This is not a mere demolition job, it's a delicate process where we aim to loosen the copper minerals from the rest of the rock. It's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Except the haystack is rock, and the needle is copper. Next comes the fascinating process known as froth flotation. Here the sand is mixed with water and chemicals. This mixture transforms the copper particles into water-repelling superstars. Air is then passed through this mixture. This causes the copper minerals to attach to bubbles and float to the surface. It's a bit like a copper party, where the copper is the guest of honor, rising above the crowd. The copper-rich froth is then skimmed off. It's thickened into a concentrate that's about 30% copper and other metals. It's a bit like making a rich, coppery soup. But you wouldn't want to taste this one. This concentrate is then ready for the next step, smelting. But that's a story for another time. Now that we have a copper concentrate, it's time to purify it even more. We start off with smelting, a process that's old as civilization itself. Here, the copper concentrate is heated intensely. This intense heat causes a chemical reaction that strips away the unwanted elements, leaving us with a copper anode slab. This anode slab is about 99% pure copper. It's a significant leap from the mere 1% we started with, but we're not done yet. We then embark on a refining process, which takes the purity to a whole new level. This process is called electrolysis. In this fascinating process, the anode slab is submerged in an electrolyte solution. When an electric current is passed through this solution, it causes the last bits of impurity to detach from the slab and adhere to the solution. What's left is a copper cathode slab that's practically pure, boasting a purity level of 99.99%. So, in essence, we've gone from a gritty, earthbound ore, through a series of sophisticated processes, to a sleek, shiny slab of near-perfect copper. This nearly pure copper slab is then ready to be transformed into something we can use. From the wiring in your home to the coins in your pocket, this versatile metal is everywhere, thanks to the intricate process of smelting and refining. So, we have a pure copper slab. What happens next? You may wonder. This lustrous slab embarks on a new journey, into the hands of manufacturers. It's here where it's transformed into a myriad of useful products, including the copper wire we're all familiar with. It's a fascinating process, bending and shaping the copper into thin conductive threads. And that, my friends, is the incredible journey of copper, from a rock in the ground to the shiny wire in your electronics. Which metal should we explore next?